Good morning. Welcome to worship at Slippery Rock United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Susan Modry, and it's good to be worshiping with you today, whether you're online or here in person. I just want to um, take a moment to call your attention to a couple announcements. One is not in your bulletin, and that is if you've noticed our interesting decor choice on the windows <laughs> out front. The reason for that is we have a robin, or maybe more than one robin, who is desperately trying to get in through those windows and just banging into them over and over. So bear with the brown paper. We know it's a look, but that's why it's there. Um, if you have not yet registered for the Spring Fling painting event, that's for all ages, you can see on the bottom of your bulletin there, we really need a head count, so we have enough supplies next Sunday. And that's from three to five. You can see some more details. And then finally, I know many of you have been affected by flooding or you know people that have been. Um, our mission barn, which is over in Newcastle for the United Methodist Church, is going to be collecting more supplies because they've sent out lots of buckets over the past week or so and they need to replenish the supplies that they have to help people. We will be sending out information about that in the newsletter and the bulletin next week, so keep your eyes open. I know that many of you would be willing to help with those needs, so please um, donate generously to UMCOR in the Mission Barn. At this time, would you stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ? And if you remain standing, we'll join together in the call to worship. As a shepherd seeks lost sheep, so God seeks and saves the lost. Like a woman who searches for a lost coin until it's found, so God rejoices over one soul restored to wholeness. As a father receives a returning wayward son, so God welcomes us and lets the past be the past. Therefore, let us praise God in thanksgiving that we are received. Let us receive and welcome and rejoice over one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's worship. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. He is mighty to save forever, offer of salvation. He runs and conquers the grave, Jesus conquers the All my fears and failures Fill my life again I give my life to follow Everything I believe in Now I surrender Yes, I surrender Savior, He can look about my God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, altar of salvation, He runs 
continue to worship. He is the one that fights our battles. Rhythm? can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our
that you are fighting for us. Lord, we are reminded that we have done nothing to deserve this. It is all through your grace. It is a gift from you. The scripture tells us you, for it is by grace we have been saved through faith, and it is nothing that we have done that deserves this. Lord, we do lay every concern at your feet, and we tell you right now that we are available to do your work. Lord, as we sing this next song, please hear the cry of our hearts that we are available to you. Amen. See. I'll follow where your spirit leads Broken as my life may be I will give you every peace I hear you call I am available On your grace again, less of me and more of you. I just want to see you move. I hear you call. I am available. I say. sacrifice use me how you want to God have your throne within my heart I hear you call I am available I say yes Lord I am available. Please be seated.
And will you join me in the prayer of confession? God of mercy, we come celebrating our unity, but we confess the many ways that we are divided. Our nationality, ethnic origin, economic status, gender, age, and musical preferences all too often obscure the common calling we share in Christ's name. May our common identity as your children and our communal witness to Christ bind us together in your name. Forgive our tendency towards separation and division and remind us that we are your Easter people. Hear the good news. When we walk in the light of Christ, we have fellowship with one another. When we confess our sins, the one who is faithful and just forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. For in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God showered mercy upon the entire world. Amen. As we uh, 
begin our time of offering and the time that we pray for that, I would remind you that we have a basket in the back as you exit the sanctuary if you want to give to the church to support the ministries and mission that we have here of reaching out also in these walls, but yes, outside the church walls too, as we reach out to our community. And I also want to take this opportunity to remind you that we are um, in the middle of a very short capital campaign. Jeff reminded me that we're trying to wrap it up by Memorial Day weekend. And actually, we want to thank you for the support that you've given to that to help make the fixes to the parsonage as well as the lights in this church because we're just about halfway there, I think, last I heard. So thank you. And continue to give to those, those uh, opportunities for mission. Let's pray together. Gracious and generous God, we know that you are the giver of all good gifts. And so as we search our own hearts for the ways that we can give back, we know that sometimes that's resources and money and sometimes it's time and love and energy, whatever it is today, we pray that you would make us joyful givers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Rowan is going to come up this morning and read our scripture for us. Luke 24, 36 through 48. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost is not a flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, he was dis well, in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the laws of Moses, the prophets, and the palms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that to repent and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are a witness of these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Almighty God, fill this space. May the meditations of our hearts and my words be acceptable to you. Amen. You know, I wonder if you've seen the recent Discover commercial, and I'm going to give a caveat that Lizzie and I both think the commercial is very annoying, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this is what we're bringing up. It's actually, I think it was created for Super Bowl Sunday, and it's played lots of times since, and essentially what they're trying to get across is any time you call Discover, you're able to talk to a human, not just a robot or AI or some other piece like that. To market the point, they have actress Jennifer Coolidge call in and speak to a voice on the phone, but she quickly wants to know, are you a robot? The voice is a little taken aback and says, well, are you? <laughs> And Jennifer Coolidge is sitting there a bit stunned and thinking about that all and responds essentially saying, how would I prove that I'm not? I wonder if Jesus felt a bit like the customer service representative as the disciples <laughs> were thinking about if he was a ghost. Like, really? <laughs> Why would I be a ghost? We jump to conclusions, right? About AI and robots, that's modern. The disciples' era, that wouldn't have been their thing, right? They jumped to conclusions that seemed a lot more likely than a resurrected Lord about ghosts. At least, that's what they thought might be more likely. But Jesus stayed. God was with them in their doubt, waiting patiently until they believed. 
He sat with them. He explained things to them. He was patient with them. And God is with us too. He's with us in our doubt, and he's going to stay. You know, the scripture might have sounded familiar. I know you read a similar one from John last week. The lectionary does that this time of year. It keeps giving us resurrection accounts. Jesus appeared to Thomas last week, right? And he said, look at my hands and look at my feet. Thomas didn't want to believe. He wanted proof of everything that happened. And today, in Luke's gospel, he appears and he terrifies his followers, right? It said they were terrified. It's actually one in a series of accounts that Luke gives. First, it started with Mary, who you'll remember from Easter. She was weeping, wondering what happened to Jesus. She was kind of confused about everything that was going on. Then right before this story, you've got the walk to Emmaus. Some of you are familiar with that. There's people walking down a road, and Jesus comes and appears to them, and they too are a bit confused at first. They don't understand. And now the disciples are looking around and trying to imagine what could possibly be going on. Because surely, they thought, it wasn't Jesus in their midst. That just wasn't possible. That response makes sense, actually. It's the human condition to doubt. It's why I referenced that really silly commercial, because it just makes sense. When we are faced with uncertainty, questions start popping into our head. When we are confronted with the greatest news of all time, that we have a God that conquered even the grave, we're not always so quick to believe that. We waver back and forth between, oh yes, that's wonderful, and I don't really know if that could be true. Nobody's certain all the time, are they? At least I hope we're not. (laughs) It's probably not a good quality to be certain all the time. It's just who we are as humans to wonder. Think about it in other terms, maybe. Remove it from faith for a minute. Have you ever taken a moment just to realize something is really happening to you? Like, you just need a second to know that this is really going on in your life. People say things like, pinch me. Is this really happening? It takes time. If you've watched an award show, You know what I mean by this. If somebody's name is called out from the podium, they often take a second to realize what's going on, don't they? Sometimes they're expecting it, but more often you see people going, is it me? Is it really me? And it's taking time for their brain to process that they won that big award. When good stuff happens, we just doubt sometimes. It's who we are. Did you notice what Jesus does? He stays. He's not angry. He's patient. He is comfortable with the doubt that the disciples are experiencing. He waits and he joins in what they're doing. He embraces the disciples. He eats with them. And he lets the good news sink in. Let that sink in. Jesus is comfortable with our doubts. God is patient and kind and loving and will stay even if we're questioning and even if we don't understand what's going on. Look, everybody has doubts, don't they? Surely you've experienced that in life. We all doubt. We doubt ourselves. We doubt people we've come to trust. And we doubt our faith. This is not limited to people who sit out there and are not preachers. Pastors doubt sometimes. In fact, the founder of the Methodist movement actually is known famously for doubting. John Wesley, who I think many of you have heard of, was an Anglican priest. And he went as a missionary to Georgia, did some work there. And even after all that time, he writes in his journal about how he was just convinced he didn't believe. He didn't think he had faith. He went to a mentor and he said, I think I should stop preaching because I don't believe. And the mentor famously responded and said, no, don't do that. Keep preaching. He said, preach faith until you have it. And then because you have it, you will preach it. 
In other words, he's told to preach through the doubt, to keep on going. His mentor knew something that Wesley maybe didn't yet. He knew that God would remain faithful and that God would remain present through that doubt. And you know what? It happened. A few weeks later, John Wesley went to a meeting at a church, maybe a little side room. It wasn't in a sanctuary, most likely. And he said his heart was warmed. And he believed and he trusted in God. And from that moment, Methodists marked the founding of the United Methodist Church. Not because it happened right then, but because the trajectory that John Wesley was sent on began a whole denomination. We're here because of that. But it started with a little bit of uncertainty. And Wesley wasn't always so sure. He admits he went back and forth. Pastors do that. Anybody does that. But faith and doubt aren't opposites. Sometimes they coexist. And if you're honest with yourself, there are times in life that you've been like that too, right? You've doubted. Maybe you even doubt God's goodness and faithfulness today. It's okay. So how does Jesus react? <laughs> What's he do in the midst of that? When the disciples say they're, un they're afraid and they're just not sure, how does he respond? He certainly didn't give up on them, did he? He didn't walk out that door. He's patient. He does ask them why they are so afraid and why there's so much rising up in their hearts that they're worried about, but he invites them to touch him. He says, look at my hands and my feet. I'm not a ghost. I couldn't be standing here with you. He lets the disciples experience that for themselves, knowing it's going to take a little time. And then he even asks for something to eat, and they bring him fish, and he eats that with them, and he patiently explains the scriptures. We don't see a God who judges. We don't see a God who is harsh and rushing people to accept the truth. We see a God who loves and waits and is patient. Jesus is present with the disciples in their doubts, and he's present with us. God is with us. That's the good news of Christmas, right? You hear that at Christmas all the time, but it's the good news after Easter, too. People of faith, all of us, experience doubt. And if you haven't been told it before, hear it today. It's okay. Jesus is still here, and he's going to keep going. You know, that also means that we have to extend that grace to one another. When people around us are going through times of doubt, or when people outside the walls of this building don't understand everything about faith, we've got to be patient. Sometimes we've got to just sit with them and let them understand and experience things on their own. Leave room for questions. Questions can be a really beautiful way to grow your faith. They're not a danger to your faith. Doubt can lead to tremendous growth in a person. It did for the disciples. It did for John Wesley. Look, don't argue or minimize somebody's concerns and questions. Love them. And let God reveal God's self to them again. Jesus offers the disciples two things, it seems to me, in this passage. He brings peace, and he brings presence. Their anxiety was like up to here, right? They weren't sure what had happened with the death, and they didn't know about the resurrection really yet. They were hearing some rumblings of that, but they didn't, couldn't make sense of it. The gift that Jesus brings is peace and presence. We should extend that to others, too, who are wrestling with faith. Because that's how the disciples turned things around. God was patient. You know, I came across a quote this week that really stopped me in my tracks because it totally summed up everything I was thinking about. If there's no room for doubt, there's no room for us. That's why Jesus' response makes such a difference. God welcomes doubters. God welcomes us, even when we don't have all the answers. 
because it's our human condition to question and reason and not be sure. You know, the kids talked about this last week in Sunday school. I hope you asked them about their lesson. Carolyn brought in bags, and she asked them, do you think you can make ice cream in a Ziploc bag? Some of them thought maybe. Some of them thought that sounded kind of ridiculous and wasn't really possible. So she asked, well, do you believe that or not? And they went back and forth about this. Then they gave it a try. And they saw you could make ice cream in bags, which I'm sure was a mess, one, and two, very delicious. <laughs> All of those things at once. But the experience made them believe. Ask them about it after church, and they'll tell you. Because the lesson is a light-hearted reminder that even when we doubt, even if all of us aren't on the same page, God remains, lets us experience the truth, and become believers ourselves. And you know what that's like as adults too, right? You can maybe know that you could make ice cream in a bag, but sometimes we doubt our own God-given gifts, don't we? We don't believe that we're equipped as God provided for us. I think about the famed author, J.K. Rowling. She wrote the Harry Potter series, for those who don't follow <laughs> such things, but I think she's well known at this point. She dreamed her whole life of becoming a writer. She would spend time writing while her kid was sleeping and really trying to make every effort to get a manuscript done. And when she did, she sent it off. Twelve publishers turned her down. That has to feel immensely defeating after you've spent all that time pouring into something you love. And she didn't always believe that things were going to turn out good. You and I know it turned out fine, right? Her book got published. Maybe it was that 13th try. And today she's one of the best-selling authors of all time. But sometimes she doubted her own gifts. It wasn't always easy to see what was coming. We doubt ourselves. We doubt our faith. It's what it means to be human. But God is going to make room for all of us, all the time. This is why we worship every week, actually. This is the pattern of our worship. We come in the doors with stress, with anxiety. We come in the doors with questions and confusions and doubt misunderstandings, and we sing, we hear the scripture, and our faith should be renewed so that we can go out and tell the world that God is still present. God is still with us through it all. When we worship, we encounter Jesus, the risen Lord, once again. You know, sometimes it takes a little while. <laughs> sometimes we don't get it right away. Sometimes we leave still feeling about the same. But it's okay. It's why we come back, we try again to go through the patterns of worship, to be renewed in faith, because we know there's a community around us, and we know there's a God with us, waiting patiently for us to return that love to him. So I want you to ask yourself this morning, does your faith make room for questions? Do you allow yourself grace when you doubt? Jesus does. Look, faith is a journey. We are never going to arrive. Just like John Wesley, you're going to have moments that feel like you're doing all the right things and you know all the answers and you've got so much faith that you could just soar on the clouds. And there's going to be times that's not true. That's okay. You know, you might not be a preacher <laughs> like John Wesley was, but you can still pray, you can still read, think, talk to other people, there are ways that you can preach faith more or less in your own life, even when you don't have it. Keep going. God is here. Keep going when you don't feel that because Jesus will remain. Jesus is comfortable with your doubt. He welcomes and he's bringing us a gift too of peace and presence. We can extend that to others so that they know more about the truth. But I really pray this morning that our questions and doubts lead us to deeper faith 
in the one who is always, always with us and waiting for us to return. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. I um, love, as a worship leader, I've actually spent some time in this doubt uh, era in that joyful, joyful, we adore thee, one of the great hymns that we've sung through generations that's been around, like it was sung at our wedding, right, Jeff? As he tells my daughter every time we sing it. <laughs> Drive the dark of doubt away. That's one of the lines in verse one. The great hymn writers also had doubts. Let's stand and worship and renew our faith. of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. 
We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, and to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and hope. In life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. And let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for the sunshine, that after days of rain and flooding, the sun has come out again and maybe a little bit will dry up. We thank you for this community that surrounds us, the people in this building and who aren't here this morning. We thank you for the ways that they've sat with us in our doubts and encouraged us in our faith. And we pray that we will continue to extend that grace to others. God, we pray for those who aren't with us this morning because of surgery, because of sickness, or who are just enjoying time away at camp. Bring them back to us safely and renewed, healed and restored. Lord, as we look around our world, sometimes we're confused. We don't know how best to respond to all the wars, we pray that you would continue to bring peace and presence even in those places where war rages. We pray for the Middle East. We pray for Israel and Iran and Gaza. We pray for Haiti. And we pray for those places that we don't hear about so frequently where your presence and your hands and feet through people like us is desperately needed. God, whatever our uncertainties, fears and questions are this morning, keep showing up. Keep reminding us of your presence. Stay with us patiently as you always have so that we can return and believe. We ask all this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever. Amen. I wanted to let you know that I am thankful for you, that we are thankful for you, because we can hear you singing up here, and it soothes our souls. It soothes my soul. Please stand as we sing our last song, and we remember that we serve a risen Savior. He lives. <laughs> Although my heart grows weary, I never will despair. 
God is with us. God is with us. The resurrected Lord is in our midst. Go in peace, knowing and believing that. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.